Hi, Lynn Zettler here, Court Impact Coaching, and today I want to talk to you about meetings. Don't you just love meetings, right? Everybody hates meetings. Everybody wishes they could get rid of their meetings, but let me just throw something at you. What if you started your next meeting with a spontaneous round of duck, duck, goose? I know, you think I'm crazy, right? Absolutely. You would probably lose a lot of credibility and people would think that you were nuts or you needed therapy, but boy, they'd never forget it, would they? They'd never forget that meeting. Well, we can't make meetings that memorable, right? We can't come up with those crazy things to make them memorable, but we can make them the most efficient and effective that we can. So let me just be clear about how you need to end your meetings, right? It's not put an end to your meetings, unfortunately, but how to properly end a meeting so that it's very effective and efficient. Well, first of all, um, you shouldn't even have a meeting without an agenda. So I'm, I'm not even addressing that. I'm hoping that you have the agenda and you've made it through the agenda successfully. So here's four tips on how to put the end on your meeting. So first, review the decisions that were made during the meeting and confirm that everyone either agrees or is willing to go along with the decisions. Sometimes I, I use a ground rule here with the teams I'm working with of the 80-20 rule. You know, if you can get 80% of the way there, then let's say we have agreement. If you can agree with something to the 80% level, you have agreement rather than being in this place where people just can't quite get there. So review the decisions, make sure and confirm that everybody either agrees or is you know willing to go along with what's been decided review the communications that are needed who needs to be communicated about any of these decisions and who's going to perform those communications and by when so be very specific because many times we make these decisions and nobody says that they're going to do it and we just assume somebody's doing it and then it never happens and it comes up again on the agenda the next meeting so at the end make sure you've got action item who's doing it who's communicating by when La or not lastly thirdly right review the all of the actions that are required and the individuals that are responsible for those actions and the appropriate due date. So those are the tasks, the things that have been assigned to people. Make sure that those are all documented. And I'm hoping that those people are in the room. If those people are not in the room, then you go back to who's communicating to these people and confirming that this is happening, right? And then lastly, determine how the team will be held accountable for those actions. What's the accountability process? Are we just going to follow up at the next meeting? Are we asking everyone to notify us once something has been completed? Um, you know, is there, is there someone responsible for following up on all of the tasks and confirming that they're done? You choose the process, but there should be a way that you're holding the team accountable. So agree to that up front end your meetings with those four things and you will have much more successful and efficient meetings. I hope that you found this helpful and if you need help, uh, you know, leading your team, uh, being a more successful leader, please reach out to me. You can go to courtimpactcoaching.com, sign up for our newsletter there or hit the contact me button. Also, you can find more videos like this on our YouTube channel, Lynn Zettler Core Impact Coaching. I hope you're having a great day and thanks for joining me here.